Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to do real-time notifications when you have a messaging feature. So this is going to involve a couple different steps and I've got two windows here to demonstrate how this is going to work. So on the left I'm logged into my sample app here as one user John at Hansen at example.com and on the right I have another browser window uh, logged in as a different user jennifer.lopez at test.com and they are both looking at the same uh, repeating group of messages that are saved in the database this is just kind of an open search it's not filtered in any way um, just to show you that they're both looking at the exact same thing what I'm gonna do is send a message as John to Jennifer Okay, so as John will say, hey again, Jennifer, how's it going? And I'm going to select Jennifer as the recipient, and you'll see what happens when I click send message. Okay, we're going to look over here on this window. Okay, now see how we got an alert message and the repeating group scrolled to the bottom so that Jennifer, the recipient, could see the latest message. Now she can do the exact same thing back to John as well. Always good to hear from you, John. And she'll choose John and then send the message. Okay, John got the same, he scrolled down, he got the alert message as well. And um, if I were to send another message to John, here's another message select John again it continues to do the scrolling and the alert so the action that we're using to make this happen is this one over here now I'm in my um, editor window so when I have the page loaded for the first time I'm using this action here trigger let me go to the um, actual selection part here it's trigger a custom event when data changes. Okay, so this, I've actually done another demo on this for showing a loading screen, but this is another use case for this action. What this does is it watches a field that you choose in your database and a specific field for a specific record too. So it's not just uh, the same field for any record, it's for um, a record in your database that you specify. So you basically tell Bubble to monitor this field and if there is any change that is made to the value of that field, it will trigger a custom event, okay? So there are a couple parts to making this work. First, you need to set up the, the flag, the field, right? So that's what this action here is for. And I have it setting up as soon as the page is loaded. So when the page is loaded, we will trigger this custom event that I have called new message. When, uh, the current user's last message field is updated. So this last message field, I will take you there right now. Uh, these are a bunch of my test fields, but we're paying attention to this field here. Last message is a date, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna rename it to last message received. All right, so that's the field that we're looking at for. Whenever the current user's last message received field uh, is changed, then it's going to trigger this custom event. So by having this action as soon as the page is loaded, what you're doing there is you're just setting up the marker. You're just saying, hey, I want to be watching this field. Nothing's actually gonna happen until something changes here. All right, so now I have my custom event and I've called it new message. Okay, to create a custom event, by the way, you would go to custom when you wanna create a new uh, event there and then hit custom, create a custom event. So you give it a name, I've called my new message. I have to give it a type of thing, so I've selected user, otherwise um, this wouldn't know uh, to send this user information to the custom event. If you see, if I deselect, if I leave it blank, and I go back to my trigger action, all of those options are gone. So I definitely need to have a type of thing set there. Now, when this is triggered, it's pretty much gonna function like any other workflow. What do I want to happen when the field is changed? So, as soon as this is triggered, that means we've got a new thing, or we've, we've made a change, um, and what I want to happen is to scroll the repeating group to the last item in that message. That way it goes all the way back down to the very bottom, um, and depending on how you have your repeating group 
sorted, you might this might be different for you, but um, I don't have any sort on it, so the newest item is going to appear at the bottom. So I have scroll to entry for the repeating group, go to the last item, I have it animating the scroll. I'm also showing an alert message. And then in order to continue this um, alert and scrolling action to happen, uh, I need to uh, continue to set up this flag. So by setting up the trigger an event when, a, when data changes, um, once it's triggered, it's done. It only fires once. So if I wanted to continue firing it while the person is on, this, on the page, because you know if you refresh the page, it'll obviously reset itself. But if the person were still on the page and they're getting multiple messages, we want to continue this alert system. So what I need to do is kind of create a looping situation where it goes through the first custom event. And at the end of that custom event, it sets up the flag again. But the custom event that this one is using, the first custom event, it's going to trigger another one because it can't call itself, right? So I can't say from within the new message custom event to trigger itself. Bubble won't let you do that. So you're going to have to create a second custom event here. So I've called this new message two that does the exact same thing, the scroll, the show message, and then it, custom event two, will trigger custom event one. So basically these will just go back and forth. You start out with the pages loaded because that will that that will allow you to do it as soon as the, the person lands on the page. But then you can just call these two back and forth. All right. So custom event one will uh, be triggering custom event two. Custom event two will be triggering custom event one again and they'll just kind of go in a loop. All right. And then the final piece is the send message button. So when that is clicked, uh, over here. That's just going to create a new message in the database and this is where we actually change the field that we're looking for. We're making a change to the drop-down user's value, okay, and updating that date field, the last message received. So again, we are changing, let me go to the front end here. If I were, if I am logged in as John, I select Jennifer as my recipient it's her date field that I'm updating. That's why when she's on this page, only she sees that alert. He doesn't see it too, okay? Because this, the flag is set up to look out for a change for the current user, right? So when John sends a message, he isn't updating his own user record. He's updating Jennifer's. That's why this um, trigger when data changes is really helpful for a messaging system of some kind because Jennifer isn't going to be able to anticipate when she's going to receive a new message. Okay, so we just kind of have to watch the database for that change. That's exactly what this action is for. Okay, so I'm going to preview this again. So let's say uh, another preview. And we'll send. So now that we've sent the message, it's updating Jennifer's date record. It's also creating a new message. And we can see Jennifer gets the alert and her repeating group scrolls down. All right, well, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about how this works, please leave a comment below. If you liked this tutorial, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Um, I love doing stuff like this. Let me know what you're interested in learning. Thanks for watching.